everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A Emails 30, where you email me your questions, and if I can't read them on Strange World, which is on Truth Frequency Radio, then I will do a separate show like this and read them here. So let's get right to it. The first email is called Moon Mars Photo Farce, Ammunition for the Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. My name is Colin Griffiths. You can say my name, from the UK. I don't know how much you've looked into images from the rovers and orbiters from Mars and the moon. I used to be big into the whole space thing, and I was convinced there was a civilization either in the ancient past or currently presiding in the solar system. It was actually the face on Mars that initially got me into the conspiracy world, and eventually the flat Earth. Oh, the irony. Anyway, my point here is that almost every image I looked at while browsing the NASA database on Mars and the moon, and I looked at a lot, I found anomalies and images with obvious image manipulation, things that are now obviously ridiculous to me, like large carved stones which look like sleepers from train tracks, lemmings only found on Davis Island, is it? C-3PO's helmet on the moon, it's such a farce that this can only be ammunition for the flat earth and I haven't seen anyone, not that I've seen all flat earth videos in the community, touch on the subject. Actually, I think Jaron has, has looked at some of this. But anyway. I have a bunch of other ideas like the equinoxes maybe being ages. You said it is possible that we have previous residents. Maybe the equinoxes have something to do with that. Also, how do the equinox work on a globe that speeds through space in four different motions? It ticks back one degree every 72 years and makes a complete circle every 26,000 years or so. This should not happen on a globe model, surely. I'm no expert though, just making some observations. I have yet to see anyone touch on tectonic plates either. Do you think they exist? I think they could quite easily work on the flat earth model. Earthquakes come from somewhere. Keep up all the good work, Mark. I felt robbed at first. I didn't care about the globe. I just wanted my space. I buy into the infinite plane theory. I guess that's me trying to hold on to space. But to be honest, after the initial shock, flat earth feels good, man. Take care, friend. Thank you for all the hard work, Colin Griffiths. Yeah, as far as tectonic plates, you know, no different than the magma systems. Everything works better on a flat Earth. It works better in a uh, uh, an enclosed structure. And by that, I mean, you know, a, a circular disk area. Everything does. It works way more efficiently. So thank you for that. Next email is called Flat Earth Convert from Australia. Read on air if you wish. <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to express my appreciation for your work on the Flat Earth Theory and to express my support in what you are doing. I've been watching all your videos, among uh, others from ODD, Eric Dubay, Rob Skiba, just to mention a few, with great interest over the past six months, and it has been an amazing experience and an awakening beyond belief. The universe has always fascinated me, but more so because it seemed so unbelievable and yet beautiful. However, I have always been skeptical of the moon landings and wondered why we have never returned. Many aspects of the Flat Earth Theory just open your eyes to the whole reason behind the moon landings and the epic deception that was devised to hide it from us, to use your words. The fact that we can live on a spinning ball hurtling through space has never made sense to me, and it is incredibly satisfying and, quite frankly, a relief to finally have the world we live in make sense. If only I could convince more people to see it the same way, but it's difficult. My sister-in-law seems to be the only person thus far that has shown any genuine interest from the moment I mentioned it. All other attempts to speak to my family about it just lead to rolling eyes and ridicule. But despite this, what a time to be alive. Keep up the good work and I will be keenly anticipating what's on the horizon when it comes to more flat earth facts and debunking the globe. Cheers, Scott. Thanks, Scott. That's awesome. This one's called Flat Earth Continues to Go Mainstream in America. Jimmy Kimmel discusses flat earth issues with J Dave Chappelle, and he sends me the link. I think it's my own, <laughs> that he sent me the link to my own video. Obviously, neither Dave nor Jimmy are interested in knowing what university graduates who became sports figures mean when they talk about flat earth, as evidenced by Dave's comment that you probably couldn't go around a flat world. Once again, notice that the tactic is mockery against the implied idiocy of believing in the flat earth concept. And what difference does it make, Dave? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps because we've been lied to on such a fundamental level about where we live that NASA and other space agencies have ripped off the world public to the tune of trillions of dollars to sell a lie we've been taught, we taught to our children? Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing history being made. Millions of new people who follow sports figures like LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Shaquille O'Neal are now wondering 
what on earth is going on, more than a few will be tempted to look into it. Art. Thank you, Art, and you're that's so true. Uh, the, you, we, we couldn't you couldn't put a price tag on the amount of exposure we've had in the last 30, 40 days, being you know Kyrie Irving and Draymond Green and AJ Styles and Richard Jefferson and Shaquille O'Neal and again LeBron James even talking about it is you know he gets paid millions of dollars just to say a product name and we got him to say Flat Earth for free. It's I mean all the all the crowdfunding in the in the world couldn't generate the amount of the amount of money it would have taken for him to say that you know, for us to solicit him. Plus there are an attorney thing. And we, we, he did it for free. Anyway, this next one's called Boston Sports Time and Station Today. Thank you, Mark. Below is a post my friend Kathy Dunson and I had on Facebook. My best friend is a world expert on point-to-point -point radio television communication. According to him, they do take the curve into account. Let's see. Hi, Kathy. My best friend is one of the world's experts on long distance point to point line of sight radio and TV and even meteor burst radio communication. He knows that the curvature of the alleged globe always needs to be taken into account. If we assume a flat plane, which is, by the way, high power line of sight, TV stations would be interfering with each other all over the world. He would be happy to debate a flat earth communication expert on this specific topic. Mark Sargent does not qualify. <laughs> All right, fine. Maybe Mark Sargent or Rob Skiba or Jaron or Bob of Globusters could suggest someone. This is not about the uh, big money challenge, by the way, just seeking the truth. Thank you, Kathy, but I was networking. My friend Bob will only debate a communication expert that knows the field as well as he does. Mark Sargent does not know communications. This is the first time I'm reading this, by the way. But maybe knows a communication flat earth expert. You have an inside track to Mark Sargent and Zen Garcia. If I ask Mark or Jaron or Bob to recommend someone, it will get lost in the mail. They do not know me, but they uh, they know you. I have not heard all the experts that have come to Mark Sargent that are flat earthers. Well, there's this problem right there. He's got to watch the testimony shows on my channel. There's so many people th th from different different walks of life that talk about the flat earth. So if you're a communications expert, you think that you're that you're bouncing stuff off of what anyway, doesn't matter. Are any in the point to point field? Hmm. My friend is currently writing his next book and has no time to investigate flat earth, but does listen to ideas when we talk. Now, only ask Mark or Jaron or Bob for me if Jesus wants you to. I've absolutely no expectations that it'll be heard or followed up on. I just find it fascinating. I know the earth is a geocentric stationary flat, so this is not in doubt. Uh, in the truth issue. I did look at Mark's expert playlist, by the way. Oh, okay. And none of those qualifies an expert to discuss point-to-point -point communications. Really? Really? Uh, with my best friend. The closest is the radar one, maybe. <sighs> but I would need a radar designer, not operator. Really? Because a radar operator doesn't qualify? Whatever. He bounces communications off meteor burst particles high above the atmosphere, apparently. It is a specific field of science. My guess is they bounce off the firmament. Yep, absolutely right. That's that's what it is. Interesting. Interesting stuff. I'd still like to talk to him, if anyone knows who it is. This one's called Chappelle and Kimmel. Mark, I'm sure you've noticed this too, the people on television calling out Flat Earth are starting to really push the why does it matter comments. It looks to me like controlled releasing in stages. Pretty soon, all will be focusing on why does it matter instead of blind mockery. What do you think the stage after that will be? Deeper still, what is the end game of the elite powers that should not be? What is there What is there for them to game? The avalanche is not slowing down. Very exciting times. Keep up the good work. Whether you're a shill or not, just kidding. People kill me. Bill Duke. Uh, first question was, what do I think the stage after after what we're running into will be? The, it'll be openly discussed, and eventually, sooner or later, someone's going to have to look into NASA. I, I get, it's really weird how the delayed effect hasn't hasn't kicked in yet, which is that people's people that are into flat Earth that are seeing it for the first time, most of them, you know, get so shocked by it. They don't ask the very important secondary question, which is, well, what did we spend all the money on for NASA? That means that everything, all the, you know, billions and billions of dollars that, that have been spent on the NASA program and all the other space programs have been for nothing. It's like, well, they haven't been for nothing. I mean, yeah, they have gotten some scientific advances out of, I guess, you know, in rocket technology. But, and, and it helped it helped further the illusion that we are on a globe. The next stage is just going to have to be open dialogue, I think. And then eventually, the, the problem, it, we're going to run into a paradox, though. And, and some people have already looked, looked into this, which is it can only go so far before the money people start getting involved. 
accusing NASA of fraud. You can't let that happen. You've got to, and, and this leads into the second thing, what is the end game? You've got to release this. You've got to bring another civilization in. You've got to bring something hidden in, something bigger than Flat Earth. You've got to bring that in to minimize Flat Earth, and that also will let NASA off the hook and all the space agencies. That, that, that is the only way NASA gets off the hook, is that somebody comes in bigger. It's a, a bigger topic than Flat Earth comes in and says, oh yeah, by the way, NASA's off the hook because we told them to do it, or they were under penalty of death, or whatever, or we did it for your own good. And it was, and the and the reasoning is, is very convincing. That's the only the only way they can get out of this right now, because right now a lot of people are buying it, and so we, of course they could focus the blame on SpaceX before it's over. Again, don't don't dismiss what SpaceX is claiming they're going to do by this time next year. But you know, putting people around the moon and back, not landing on the moon, but putting them around the moon and back, which is, hasn't even been attempted, hasn't even been faked in over fifty years. So that's very, very interesting. But thank you, though. This one's called Flat Earth Forever. Hey, Mark, good morning or good afternoon when you're reading this email. Thank you and a few other choice truthers out there for all the great work you do every day. I've long known they faked the moon landings and have been lying for decades, but not really why. When I learned about Flat Earth, my head went like those people on the Jet.com commercials with the top of their heads exploding. I became a flat earther in November 2016 after investigating and doing my own research on videos I saw about the flat earth. I saw this website, starale.com, that makes shooting stars for people in the sky while watching a video about fake planets and so on. I believe, like the people in the video, that they have more advanced technology than this they are using to date. When you get a chance, please check out this website, and if you get a chance, also please let me know what do you think of it? In the words of a commentator on a Flat Earth video, once you go flat, you don't globe back. Well, that's a good t-shirt. Laters. P.S. Not a space. Oh, all the different things for NASA. Not a space agency. National Aeronautics Sorcery Administration. Necromancers and sorcerers aligned. Never a straight answer. Never astronauts space adventure. Never a space adventure. New Age Society Aeronautics. It's good. And I will, yeah, I'll check out starale.com. That's that's awesome. I'll, I will check that out. S S T A R hyphen A L E dot com. I will check it out when I get a chance. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey Mark, just wanted to leave a short message. I woke up this morning and turned on the TV, and Law and Order was on. And out of nowhere, one of the lawyers blurts out, "If a suspect says the sun goes around the Earth and the Earth is flat, he's a lunatic." Gotta say, they really do try to ridicule the idea. I just thought it was a coincidence that that particular episode came on after the media explosion lately. Thanks, Andy S. Yeah, if somebody finds that clip from Law & Order, I'll totally mirror image it and put it up uh, in the slideshow somewhere. That's awesome. Thank you for that. This one's called Freemason. Hey, Mark, happy hump day. Just wanted to get your thoughts on Freemason. Freemasonry. Been watching this guy on YouTube named Russian Vids. Any thoughts on comments on Freemasonry and how it's relevant to the Flat Earth? If there is any, regards, Garish. And uh, yeah, right after this, I will email this guy and point him to one of my subject matter experts. I actually did have a, a 32nd degree Mason come on and talk about Flat Earth for a couple hours on Strange World, which is on Truth Frequency Radio, and it is currently on YouTube right now. So check. All you have to do is type in flat Earth Mason, or just go to my channel and go to testimony shows, and you'll you'll find that in there. But I will definitely let him know as well. This one's called "Just Wanted to Introduce Myself." Hello, Mark. I've been listening to your interviews playlist for the past few weeks, and I felt strongly that I would like an email, like to email you my flat Earth story and put out an offer for assistance. First, a slight criticism. In your earlier interviews, you sound a little more organized and enthusiastic than some I listened to from the present day. I've noticed that some of this depends on the organization of the interviewer, like Interview 22 with the Stoner radio host. Also, bravo on how you handled yourself with the Dubé sycophant from Interview 11. I have heard your side of the Dubé conflict many times, but now after watching some of Eric's videos, including the Eddie Bravo interview, I get it. You might not want to read this aloud. He is... No, I'm definitely reading this. He is a highly intelligent, narcissistic, paranoid, schizophrenic. I'm, you know what? He might be onto something there. Seriously, though, I enjoy listening to all your videos. They are nearly always plain while I am at work. Hmm. My story. I came to Flat Earth through Rob Skiba and those pesky YouTube recommendations. I cannot wear the t-shirt about trying to debunk Flat Earth because in all reality, it wasn't that hard to convince 
even though I wasn't into conspiracies. My family and I had started attending a new church in late 2014, and the adult Sunday school teacher was extremely well studied, not only in scriptures, but in all conspiracy theories and how they relate to the great deception of the last days. Even though I had been to church my whole life, I felt completely in the dark when he would speak about Admiral Byrd, Hollow Earth, Little Green Man, Nimrod as the king of the world, etc. To feel not so lost during class, I decided to turn to the YouTube font of knowledge while at work. I first found William Cooper, who opened my eyes to conspiracies, but found him a little too paranoid. And then Alex Jones, who was a little too intense. I eventually found Rob and was able to quickly earn my first authority deception conspiracy badge. In retrospect, this must have been just after he brought his Testing the Globe site back up, deciding to throw off public opinion. While watching Rob's biblical stuff, I kept seeing YouTube recommendations for Flat Earth. These I dismissed out of hand quickly, quoting to myself, Circle of the Earth. However, after watching Rob's first three parts on Testing the Globe, I was on board. I already knew what the scriptures said about corners, pillars, and the firmament, but had always tried to squeeze in the ball because I was told to. Once I gave up the globe, it was actually a relief because I had no longer had, I'm sorry, no longer had the excuse to excuse things that pointed at a flat enclosed creation. Understanding the fallen Nephilim and flat earth made scripture and even more rich and, and a complete and complete to me. From Rob's stuff, I naturally got to your videos as well as many others in the Flat Earth community. My first and only attempt at telling someone was my wife last July, and that did not go well. The funny thing about it was that a couple weeks after she and I talked, the topic came up in Sunday school. She looked at me, and I could see that she no longer thought I was crazy, even though Flat Earth was not widely received in the class. The pastor was not trying to convince anyone. He just floated it out to see what could happen and hasn't brought it up again since. I am working up the nerve to broach this with my parents. I have decided that I will lead with questions on why they reject Big Bang evolution and then apply the answers they provide to globe reasoning fallacies. Should be fun. My offer. I have a preference for your presentation style and so have decided to attempt to watch all of your playlists and the videos that you recommend. Wow, it's a lot of, all my playlists? I don't even watch all my playlists. Through your recommendation, I have watched many of the Flat Earth experimentation videos and see things from possibly a different perspective than some. I'm an electromechanical design engineer and work with scientists and other researchers in the nuclear medicine field. Specifically, I work in research and development, designing, building, and testing new equipment used in the production of radio pharmaceuticals. After the proof of concept design phase is complete, I assist in planning the design of experiments for testing, collection, and presentation of the data, and then transferring the design to mass production. What I often see in Flat Earth is well in uh, intentioned people presenting data collected without calibration, sometimes without a statistically relevant sample size and drawing unprovable conclusions. A quick example would be buying a hardware store infrared thermometer, pointing at the ground and pronouncing things X degrees hotter or colder, therefore the sun must be this and the moon must be that. While I often agree with the position, there is little credibility in the data collection which would be needed as Flat Earth goes more mainstream. Otherwise, it will sound like Shaq saying that he does not turn up at 360 degree angles as he is driving. I get what he meant, but it was not presented well. Most scientists I know would dismiss most of the flat earth out of hand, not because of their educational doctrination, but because of the standard that they have learned to expect from researchers in the scientific community. I, better than many, understand the difference between the true scientific method and scientism. I am offering guidance in one, how to scientifically collect data, two, how much relevant data is needed for proof, three, how to correctly interpret and summarize data and experiments, and four, how to present the findings in a credible manner. I do not have enough spare time or creativity to come up with my own experiments, nor do I have the artistic ability to present anything someone would want to watch. I can, however, help those that do. I believe in the work and the cause and would like to help anywhere possible. Please feel free to forward my name or email to anyone seeking assistance or that you feel could use technical expertise. A side note, I recently started using Pinterest after long denouncing its relevance as just something for my wife to find honey, <laughs> honeydew ideas. When I finally gave in, I found that there is an amazing community of flat earthers sharing pins and memes on there. Just thought I would pass that along in case you hadn't uh, hadn't seen it. I am working on trying to justify to my wife why we need to go to Raleigh in November. Keep up the awesome work. Best regards, Jeremy in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is not that far from Raleigh. And if you guys want to email this guy, if you guys want to run a scientific test and you want to use his scientific methods and 
he's willing to do the legwork on this for you. His email is jabner182 at gmail.com. So thank you for that. It's awesome. This one's called Mars Bars. Interesting title. Hey, Mark, I emailed you a while back waiting for you to answer my e email on your Q&A show. Ha, I know you probably have a poop ton of emails to weed through. Poop ton. Nice. I know this is an age-old flat earth question. Why are all these pictures of Mars? Where are all these Mars pictures coming from? Maybe Antarctica? Oh, the ground pictures? Yeah. Where no one can really go. And why have they, NASA, chosen to focus a lot of their attention on one planet? Has the Lucifer telescope actually captured images of what planets really look like above the dome? And is there a credible source I can read into that you know on that subject? Thanks, bra, Matt Whittle. He's a set designer, hairstylist, and artist. As far as looking outside the dome, I can't confirm or deny that we can look outside the dome. Everything that I think we see up there is inside the firmament, no different than a planetarium. When you go to a planetarium, can you see outside of it? No, because all the images are projected on the inside of it. As far as focusing on Mars, that's because it's the only planet, supposedly, if you look this up, they, they say they've had at least 48 attempted missions, missions to Mars by uh, half a dozen different space agencies. And it's the only other planet they even claim that we've land on, landed on. You know, we, we supposedly never, we've never landed a probe with pictures on Jupiter or Saturn or Neptune and, and all that stuff. So that's why they're focusing on it. That and, you know, again, it, it keeps the drumbeat alive. You're focusing on Mars because you're, the second you even think about Mars, you're reinforcing the globe. That's all they're doing. But anyway, thank you, Matthew. This one's called Flat Earth Proof on Vancouver Island. And so, Mark, very nice to unofficially meet you. You have, in many ways, been influential and a catalyst for me as I learned about Flat Earth and how to get past cognitive dissonance. Please appreciate what you do. I'm sorry, really appreciate what you do and why you do it. I couldn't believe that you were from Vancouver Island as I grew up in Nanaimo myself. Well, I'm not from Vancouver Island. I'm actually from Whidbey Island, which is down in the States. But you can see it from here. If you go to the beach down here in Victoria, you can actually see the top of Woodby Island. Currently, I reside in Chilliwack. Beautiful, but I miss the island and ocean views. The reason I'm emailing as I feel as though I can prove that the Earth is flat, with very solid and conclusive evidence, enough to shake the scientific community to the core. And it can be done in just a few days, and it can be done on the very island I love so much. I was really hoping to hear from you and possibly talk in person, although you are definitely more eloquent in speaking with people than I am, it seems. Regardless, I hope to hear from you and will keep my fingers crossed. Mark, I think together we can literally prove without doubt there is no curve. God bless, bro. And, and yeah, I, every once in a while I get emails like this. Look, you don't need me to necessarily prove the the, the flat earth. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the word out there, but do, do your own tests. Just get your camera out there, start filming. And if you're not comfortable with putting it up on YouTube, send it to me and I'll, I'll take a look at the unedited footage and you know, maybe I can get some recommendations or tighten it up for you. It's not that hard. Again, remember, I'm using free software to make my, my videos. I'm using Windows Live Movie Maker. In fact, they, they it's not, it hasn't been updated for a few years. I'm using an old version of it. They even make it. It doesn't even come with Windows 10 and it does everything I need it to. I mean, it's not super polished, but does anyone need really super polished? This one's called Truman President Show. Hi, Mark. I am very interested in Flat Earth. I am not as convinced as you, but heading that way slowly. I live in England, but and not that up with American presidents, but I was reading a piece on Antarctica, and I said that the president, the time that the president at the time, Admiral Byrd, went to explore Antarctica was Truman. Oh, yeah, Harry Truman. Absolutely, he was. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, it was. Yeah, well, actually, he was there from 1928 until 1956. So there were several presidents when he was down there. But Truman, I believe, was his last one. And you know where I'm going next? Is it a coincidence that the Truman Show is about an enclosed world? Are they trying to tell us something? Just wondering if you've made this connection. Great work. Keep it up. Cheers, S, from UK. No, I hadn't made the connection yet, but that's because, again, Admiral Byrd was down there in 1928, and it was a different president. But the last one, I believe... And I don't have it in front of me. I believe Truman was still president in 19... He was president after World War II ended. Was he the president in the late 1950s? Or I think it was Eisenhower. 
by the time the, the bird almost died. Or by the time... Eh, anyway. You guys can look that up. This one's called NASA Video Question. Mark, firstly, thank you so much. Your Flat Earth clues are a truly genius way to present the concept of Flat Earth. I am still fairly new to this realm, so I admit there are a lot of videos and information that I have yet to find. But I have a question about all that the, uh, the NASA videos that people show and try to debunk. Is there an argument out, out there about the women's hair being a danger to themselves and everybody else there? <laughs> yeah. Good point. I absolutely agree that most times I've seen it, it looks like they have styled and glued it into position to appear that they are in zero gravity. But has anyone addressed that it would be extremely dangerous for these women not to keep their hair contained? Yes, absolutely right. My hair isn't even shoulder length, and I sometimes I shut it in the car door as I'm getting in. How have none of these women been scalped or decapitated due to getting their hair caught in something as they floated by? Why would NASA even allow this possibility? My point. My point, if you're going to be up in the space station, at the very least, you're, you're shaving your head because it, it, no, the, the rules would be the same like you're in a pool. Because in a pool, they make women wear shower caps because otherwise their hair breaks off and, and it's like you're swimming through spider webs. No, there'd be hairs flowing around, long hairs floating around everywhere. They'd be constantly dealing with that. So you would have to wear some sort of hat. Not only would you have your head shaved, but you, you'd have your head covered so the hair wouldn't be breaking off. Most both men and women it's the exact opposite thanks so much good luck in your future endeavors you're doing our world a major service lacy l-a-c-e-i i've never seen lacy spelled that way awesome this one's called Jackie Kennedy Reference. Greetings, Mark. Thanks for the update. Just wanted to correct an inaccuracy I heard in one of your broadcasts that re referenced Jackie Ke Kennedy, as you characterized it, trying to get out of the car. She was not trying to get out of the car. She was attempting to retrieve a portion, portion of brain skull that was blown away from her husband's head. Look carefully at the film. She was reaching for an object. Keep up the good work, devoted fan. An interesting thing happened since I started sharing your information. My AOL account no longer works. <laughs> I sent this through Gmail, AOL's looking into the problem. That's from Daryl Slaughter. His last name is actually Slaughter. Wow. Awesome. Thank you, Daryl. This one's called Why Missiles? Mark, I've watched a lot of these documentaries of yours, and I is very good. Thank you for making it. I was just wondering why you thought the military would fire missiles up at the dome. What was their intent? Did they want to blow it up? Why nuclear missiles? If you were just trying to see how high up it was, why use nuclear missiles? Thanks again. You've left me very curious. Rich Kennedy. And yeah, they're trying to break through. That's what men do. If they're, if they're caged in, you're going to test the boundaries, plain and simple. You're going to test the outer boundaries and you're going to test the upper boundaries. And testing out upper boundaries is easier than going out in Antarctica and firing missiles out there because, one, you don't even know how far the boundary is initially, and it's cold. It's hor horrible. Why not do it from a tropical island? Why not set up something in uh, the Bikini Atoll and fire missiles straight up from there? It's way easier to, to do it. This one's called Equinox 2017 from Lauren. Hello, Mark. Do you have any e information regarding the date of the 2017 vernal equinox for the Flat Earth model? Thank you, Lauren. Lauren, no, I don't. I, I don't know anything about that. But if anybody does, please email me. Let me know. This one's called Thanks. Mark, I know you've been working a ton this past month or so, but keep it up. Knocking out of the park daily, brother. I and many others appreciate you standing up for the truth. John. Thank you, John. Great. This one's called It's Bobby Again. Hey, Mark, just a note the last email I sent about Devon Island, I think I misspelled my hometown. I am from Ladner, British Columbia. That or you pronounced it weird. Regardless, thank you for being the poster boy of Flat Earth. Poster boy? Oh, boy. Uh, just a small request for four years from now, if you haven't been bought out or die in a plane crash by then, can you please run for president of the United States? <laughs> Hashtag Sergeant President. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, flattered really really flattered but no politics not really something i want to get into okay a short story i was at work today in the restaurant i work at and somehow got into the conversation about flat earth with a 17 year old dishwasher <laughs> he heard me talking about it to someone else and started asking questions first in shock asking wait you think the earth is flat i said yes did you know there is no proof that the earth is a globe he then asked what proof do you have the earth is flat i said more than the globe model 
By this time, the kitchen staff and servers were starting to look at us strangely, so I said go to YouTube and search Flat Earth Clues. Start there and come back to me for any questions. My point to this little story is that people are paying attention. I can feel it in the air. Flat Earth Theory is not off the table now. In fact, I think we have made it onto the table. Maybe just the edge of the table, but the table nonetheless. <laughs> it's great. It is at least a topic that is being talked about in places I never would have guessed by people I never would have guessed like Shaq. That one blew my mind. Keep up the videos, man. People are starting to think for the first time in 500 years. P.S. I told my A-cup girlfriend to, say, to stay flat. She was not impressed. <laughs> God, that's terrible, man. And don't judge women by their breast size. You know, women are wonderful no matter what what size they are. Cheers, Bobby J. Great story, Bobby. I like that one. This one's called Thumbnail from Flat Blastered. Flat Blast, Flat Bastard. Figured, Mark, you, maybe you could use this. Keep on killing those interviews. And he forgot to send me the actual thumbnail. He sent me the email but didn't include the thumbnail link. That's a rookie mistake and you hate to see it. Remember, guys, if you're real excited about sending me an email, don't forget to attach whatever it is you want to attach. This one's called, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Mark, thank you. I am one of those suffering. I believe that you said that in the video. I always have. There are and were so many unknowns that have stories that are untold, but I believe with all my heart that one day it will all make sense. The most beautiful and fascinating people I've known have suffered severe, severely in this world and to think that so many die with untold stories without them. That is such a tragic and heartbreaking thing to me. I hold on to the belief that it's all for a reason that when we finish here, it will be revealed and we'll find beauty and love and peace and comfort in a way that cannot even be fathomed in this world. That belief brings me some peace and hearing the way you said it in your video brought tears to my eyes. You have a beautiful way with words. Thank you. I had to reach out to you and tell you that sometimes some things stand out to me and usually those things bring me some peace and comfort and reassurance. Thank you. And that's from Elena. I won't say her last name because she did not sign it, but it's from Elena. You're very welcome. And when I made that clue, clue eight, uh, creative force, uh, that's what I was going for. I wanted people to you know, feel better. I wanted to give them some inspiration because I was getting a lot of emails saying, look, I feel, I'm feeling closed in. I'm feeling claustrophobic. That was not my intent. Again, flat earth affects people in different ways, but uh, I'm glad that you got something out of that. It's wonderful. This one's called Watch Family Guy Peter's Space Shuttle on YouTube. He gives me a link to it. Thought you would find this interesting, Mark. Been watching you from the beginning, starting with your flat earth clues and onwards. It is, sad, it is a sad journey you go on once you accept the flat earth. The slow realization that all you have been taught and shown all of your life is fraudulent, as far as space is concerned at least. I am nearing 40, and I was a huge space guy and a big gamer like yourself, and like I said, to know what I feel to be the truth. Flat Earth, well, let's just say it opens your eyes, but it's a sad experience all the same. Keep up the fantastic work. Mike from Manchester, England. Awesome. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I've just watched some of your YouTube videos under the Dome Full documentary. I have an idea. What if the Earth was round but much, much larger? But something big happened that broke the Earth up and the piece that we're, uh, we're on needed a dome to keep the oxygen in that was placed there by something bigger, not God. What if we're on a display for someone else beyond the dome? Lie. Oh, okay, that was number one. Two, beyond the dome lies nothing, a world that doesn't make sense like a hologram world that projects, projectors can't handle to render beyond Earth. Number three, this world is a game. I would love to hear what you think about it. If it's a unique thing or if it's stupid, please give it a thought. And uh, yeah, I've addressed this in, in, in many different interviews and videos. So check those out if you get a chance, Kyle. Awesome. And moving on, this one's called Colorado Native. Hello. Mark, my name is Nick Duran. I'm a Colorado native and found your information exploring YouTube for info on the flat earth. I'm becoming a true believer and when I discovered you were in Colorado, I became interested in contacting you. Then I heard your recorded interview from Extra Sauce and discovered that you have been teaching somewhere, software to people for 20 years and grew extra intrigued since I am currently an adult working full time who is also working on an online degree in software. I know you are probably very busy, but I would love to chat sometime if you ever get bored. P.S. I especially liked your comparison to, of Flat Earth Theory to Fight Club, since the first rule of Fight Club is that you don't talk about Fight Club. 
That's from Nick. And by this time, Nick, I, I see his phone number is in Colorado. By this time, he's figured out that I have left Colorado after 20 years, and I'm currently up in Victoria, Canada, just above the northwest corner of the United States. So anybody that's out in Colorado, I'm some of my best friends are, are still in Colorado. And uh, I may go out there to visit, but I haven't been there in a couple of years now. This one's called Video U.S. Navy Test Star Wars Electromagnetic Railgun That Can Destroy Targets Up to 125 Miles Away. Mark, thought you would find this good cannon fodder for a YouTube video. Ah, I see what you did there. You guys can look up the railgun. There's lots of different stories. He goes, they say it's a projectile, not a guided missile. You know where it takes from here. Best Russell Palermo. And what he's saying, and, and actually I think Jonathan from Jersey was one of the first people to talk about this a while ago when they were even considering the railgun, <clears throat> which is that the railgun, if it fires straight at 125 miles, has to deal with thousands and thousands of feet of curvature. But if it's a if it's not a guided missile, how are they accounting for it? Are you <clears throat> because a railgun fire is notoriously flat, so are you lobbing the shot? Plus, you can't see the target from 175 or 125 miles away, supposedly, because it's on the other side of the curve. How exactly does the targeting system work? It's very interesting. More people should look into it. Do I think it's the silver bullet? See what I did there? No, I don't. But it's still good. Uh, I still like it. This one's called Shaq and his money. It's got to be related to the dollars. Uh, Mark, so maybe his mom got to him. He saw, she's talking about Shaq or maybe one of his sponsors. The money article says it is 10 months old. So that means the $20 million is still current. Maybe Fruity Pebbles doesn't want a fruitcake or flat earther being their sponsor. And let's see here. And it's, it's this is part of a, a part of an article from moneyinc.com about Shaq's endorsements. So it says, in addition to being a successful restaurant franchisee, a significant portion of the more than 20 million that Shaq makes every year from endorsement deals revolve around food like Fruity Pebbles, Muscle Milk, Vitamin Water, Arizona Cream Soda are just a few of the food companies and brands that have helped him rake in good money. The latter is a line of all natural sodas, that's the Arizona thing, that bears Shaq's image and are a result of a collaboration between him and the beverage company Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, Shaq has made a lot of money. So it only took one sponsor to contact his agent and said, yeah, if he keeps going down this flat earth thing, we may not, we may not pick him up. So this one's called Conspiracy Theories. Dear Mark, okay, but they are not hiding God. They don't know God well enough to do that. God must have hidden himself. Ooh, intriguing. Do you have a military background? I can neither confirm nor deny those allegations. Actually, I was in the National Guard when I was in college and ROTC. I'm not shy about saying that. It seems so. I'd like a, to show about the pieces of the puzzle that led you to this conclusion because this means that death itself is also an unnecessary illusion. Well, I wouldn't say unnecessary. If God doesn't die, then why should I? If there is a God, thanks. I will do intense research within the next 50 hours. <laughs> I thank you, Mark. Kind guards, Laredo, L-E-R-A-T-O. That is one of the most interesting ways to end an email. I will do intense research within the next 50 hours. It's so specific. Awesome. And I don't know where to go from there. Let's move on to another email. This one's called Security of the Flat Earth Conference. This was sent to myself and Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, Patricia Steer. Mark and Patricia, please have Robbie or whoever really plan for security at this event. And don't worry, he, he are, this is already being taken care of. Even if we have to pay for extra off-duty police officers, the comments on that last video, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, have me and others worried. I did not respond to the gross and horrible comments directed to you, Patricia, did respond to a lot of other comments. The Marine in me wanted to punch them in the nose. The Preacher in me, wow, he's a Marine and a Preacher. The, mar the Preacher in me just prayed for them. I will be supporting security, passively as an attendee, due to many years as a trained security professional and retired Marine just by watching people. I want no part in the coordination of this event, but will very much protect anyone there from any real threat that I am able to help with. Because I live close by, I will conduct some pre-conference inspections on my own. I have some pretty good gear that can sniff out problems. I will report to Robbie and whoever I need to if I find anything. Doubt I will. Going to back this up by making even greater friendships with that local police department. All of this may be complete nonsense, maybe even a waste of time. But it has been my job for, what, 35 years? I can't help myself. 
Keep up the good work, you two. Much love and blessings from the Flat Earth Preacher, John. P.S. I have lots of videos of me talk, talking Flat Earth with people, but as always, takes a spiritual path, so never really of interest to the greater audience. I am cool with that, and just doing my part is fine with me. Awesome. Great. And no, I'm not worried about security of this thing. Look, if they wanted to shut Flat Earth down, they would have done it a long... You, you don't wait until you do a conference before you shut Flat Earth down. In fact, if you wanted to drone strike the conference and blow everybody to smithereens, all that would do is generate... You'd turn everybody into martyrs at that point because it would be a huge story. Flat Earth conference destroyed. In fact, I hope there's some weird... You know, not violent thing. I hope there's some weird thing that happens at the Flat Earth Conference to generate more publicity. I hope a celebrity shows up. I hope there's protesters. I hope that any, any publicity is good publicity. And it's it's an easy, I mean, it's it's seriously, it's like shooting fish in a barrel because it's it's so easy to for the media to, they want to cover this thing. They just need, I think there's gonna be media they're covering it anyway. So any added bonus, any excuse, they, they, they'll just dress. Trust me, it'll it'll be right. Okay, how much time we got? Oh, we still got 15 minutes. We're fine. Let's go to this one. It's called Thought from Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, episode 150. Thomas here, Maryland plate number F-L-T-E-R-T-H. Ooh, good. He's part of the Flat Earth License Plate Club. In your discussion of putting two tourists in a rocket to be flown by remote control, how about this for a scenario? Two people that go want to disappear. The rocket explodes egg like the challenger and the rest is history i was introduced to the idea of the flat earth by my father and some friends of his who were commercial pilots when i was having trouble buying what i was being taught at school i am the product of a late in life birth my parents were both from immigrant families my father was born in 1889 and my mother was born in 1898 he was an electrical engineer working in the field of electromagnetism with his father brother with his father's brother so i can't say that i had a typical upbringing my PhD has an ology at the end of it. Nastir, if you want to run away from home, I have a bug out bag ready to go. <laughs> I enjoy your programming immensely, Thomas. Awesome, Thomas. And I show off his flat earth license plate whenever I get it. Again, if everyone wants to do a flat earth license plate, you don't even have to wait till the plate shows up. As long as you get a screenshot from the Department of Licensing, I will use it as a placeholder or a plate holder. On my videos, I, I love showing them off because there's so many people now. We've got at least half the states and half the Canadian provinces, and I don't think we have any territories yet. So there's 10 Canadian provinces and three territories, and I think Australia can do it too. I don't think you can do them in Europe, but Australia, you can, you can do customized license plates. I don't know about New Zealand either, but I take all comers. That's great. Fantastic. I will definitely show them off. And in fact, I'm, I'm using a thumbnail for this one, I think is New Hampshire the ocean state and that one's just a screenshot taken from the department licensing and then when you finally send me your actual plate uh, i just name them the same so i can just plug and replace them and they it's automatic it's great so this one's called flat earth mark so if the world is flat we basically live in the matrix and do you live in colorado i recognize your area code thanks tyler brown well no no the matrix is a whole nother level on top of this if you go into the whole virtual world matrixy uh 13th floor type scenario. I, I, I try to live one world at a time. So I try to live inside this enclosed structure. Anything outside of it, I really can't focus on because I'm still trying to figure out this. Remember, one world at a time. This one's called Nice Video by Jeremy. Mark, there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. The self must cease through awareness of its own limitation, the falseness of its own existence. However deep, wide, and extensive it may become, the self is always limited, and until it is abandoned, the mind can never be free. The mere perception of that fact is the ending of the self, and only then is it possible for that which is real, which is the real to come into being. And that was from Krishnamurti. These two quotes may appear to be intelligent. However, the first is discordant with the second. Surely the ending of the self can never transpire when the word superior is introduced in regards to the self. I just watched your two hour video and I have seen shorter versions of this when you address flight paths in the Southern hemisphere. I know how you do not introduce God into this discussion until the very end that is. It is 
Is that because this kind of research leads you to God? Yes. I'll answer that one right now. It appears to have led Brian Mullen into this impasse. Just because all science is a lie does not mean the God story is true. The intelligence, intelligent agencies also use this trick. A good example is Lusitania. Introduce the one and the two torpedo theories and get people arguing amongst each other about whether there were one or two torpedoes and no one can see that it makes sense that there were no torpedoes. If you want to start a war, you just blow up your own damn ship and blame the country you wish to fight with. Mm -hmm. It was the same plot as the sinking of the Maine 17 years earlier and not that different from Pearl Harbor or the Gulf of Tonkin, 9-11 or weapons of mass destruction. All true. All excellent points. You have the best flat earth video that I have seen and I like balls out physics, but you can't find God. The research that is going on at CERN trying to find the God particle, building, building billion dollar quantum computers and trying to blow up the dome or whatever is up there like hydrogen bombs is dangerous and reckless and makes Aleister Crowley, Kenneth Grant, Jack Parsons, and L. Ron Hubbard look like a bunch of schoolboys playing with a Ouija board. Or Ouija board. I just got word worlds beyond the poles. Have you read this? In fact, I am most interested in the occult. However, whenever I am reading every day, I read some Krishnamurti. And hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, guys. Which is where I got the above quote. But I don't think that there is, is any real if all we are a bundle of memories... When we pro then we probably don't exist. The self is the problem, but obviously we cannot make an effort to get rid of the self. That's an expansion of the self. If the stars are an optical illusion, then that may imply that so is everything else, including existence. And I doubt that death is an escape. Ooh, he's getting metaphysical. But I'm not about to study the Merkava text and climb up the seven steps so I can be liberated from this and sit next to God. That's another failed system that somebody invented. Yes, the mind is very cunning and persistent, but that just means we are deluded. To correct dis Descartes, D-E-S-C-A-R-T-E-S, -E I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I think, therefore, I think I exist. If we lost our memory, would, or is that Descartes? Is that, that how you pronounce it? I, if we lost our memory, would we have an identity? No, we wouldn't. You think flat earth is the biggest lie. There is always a bigger one. We live in a simulated world and our brain is just a biological computer. It tells us since we began thinking at age two in a language that was created that we exist, that the lie, that is the lie we must address. After that, there is no after that. After that, there is no after that. I'm actually reading this. There is no new thought. We inherit memory as we do, a trait through the morphic field. When we find a mathematical formula, we are simply discovering aspects of a code that was always there or that had some highly advanced computer programmer used. If such simulations are possible in theory, then eventually humans will create them, presumably many of them. Therefore, in time, there will be many more simulated worlds than non-simulated ones. Statistically speaking, then, we are more likely to be living in a simulated world than a real one. Your belief in God is merely an escape from your monotonous, I'm sorry, monotonous, stupid, and cruel life. And, and that was also by Krish, Krishna Murti. Thank you, Jeremy from New York, New York. It's good. It's a good email. I like it. This one's called, we can do a few more. This one's called Gages. Hey, Mark, I have been listening to you for a few years now. I am planning to attend the conference in November. I think I bought the last of the VIP tickets. I was listening to your show regarding the ISS and the engineer who discovered the maintenance of the ISS and the seals used. Another question we should be asking about the temperature gauges and other equipment supposedly used in satellites. How do they maintain its calibration? I work in the automotive industry and quality assurance. One standard that is followed is the requirement to have an annual calibration of all gauges and measuring devices. Logically, unless NASA has secret technology, there is nothing in the meteorology industry which does not require calibration or a calibration check especially in the harsh environment of space also i would like to know what time of me type of measuring equipment is able to be used in the thermosphere and be able to measure surface temperature of the planet also my ex had an uncle who worked for the navy and his main function was to calibrate all of the electronic equipment which had to be done annually as well. I would like to know how the ISS maintains its other equipment. Just some questions for discussion. Thanks very much, Rich. Yes, excellent points. Questions on questions. The calibration. It's, it's, it's great stuff. 
This one's called another mention of Flat Earth during Tucker Carlson's show on Fox News. Hey, Mark, about nine minutes and five seconds into the video. Tucker Carlson says the words kooky flat earther while he was t talking with the women in the video. Fox News trying to keep the sheep on the kooky side. And he puts a link to it. So flat Earth Arizona. Oh, and, and this was being sent by the Flat Earth, the guy from the Flat Earth License Plate Club, Arizona. F-L-A-T-R-T-H. Awesome. Thank you for all you do, Mark. That's from Tony Stanley, otherwise known as Stock Jockey. Super great. Liking these emails. This one's called Tides. Mark, do you have a video or theory on what causes the rising and falling of the tides? Love your work, man. Jeff Rice from Minnesota. No, when it comes to the tide, I just, all I can tell you is it's not the moon. The, there's no way an object that small is going to be projecting a beam a gravitational waves that's going to be affecting the tides. I think the tides are controlled from underneath like everything else. No different than the underwater conveyor system and the magma system and the tectonic system. If everything's down here, it's much easier to control the tides from underneath. The, and you can say that it's being controlled. From, you can create the illusion that it's being controlled from up above and, and time it with the moon. Therefore, people make the connection. Oh, it's got to be the moon. But it's not. It's being controlled from underneath. Do, do I have any uh, examples of this and, and proof? No. No. But you got to expand your mind. This one's called Question. Hot Mark, I, hi, I was just wondering if anyone has taken three measurements of the sun's shadows morning, noon, and evening or at near the equator during spring or fall. The shadow from a telephone pole top or the light down is a fairly level yard. Mark three points, then pull the string. If the three points are angled, we have flat earth. If it's ball, then they would all three be in line. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I don't know if anyone's done that test yet. Although Matt Boylan did a wonderful little impromptu test. I don't know if he was totally sober doing it on his video today. And it showed that, yeah, with any light source, with sticks. Again, it's not about the sticks and shadows. It's about NASA telling us that you, they're making an assumption about how big the, the sun is and how big the earth is. It's like, yeah, if the sun is this big and the earth is a globe, then the sticks and shadow argument might work. But it also works if the sun is much closer and much smaller, like, say, several thousand miles up and, on, and less than 50 miles wide. It's, it's, it, they, it works in multiple, the, the six and shadow argument is not absolute. Meaning, yeah, it might work if the sun is 93 million miles away and the sun is hundreds of thousands of miles across. But it will also work if the sun is much closer and much smaller. And they can't, they can't argue that. Even, even mainstream science will say, that, oh yeah, but it's not. We know the sun is 93 million miles away. How do you know this? And, and then they go into the whole space thing. Uh, how much time? We got time for maybe two more. I think we can squeeze them in. This one's called Venus, Mercury, Transit of the Sun. Hey, Mark, have you discussed the transit of the Sun by Mercury and Venus in any of your presentations? No, I have not. Seems these planets' wandering luminaries would have to be considerably smaller and closer to the smaller, closer Sun, which is okay by me. Just curious if you've ever gone over this. No, I haven't, but you're absolutely right. If the Sun is much smaller and closer, the planets also have to be tiny by comparison. This one's called... Oh, I don't know if I want to make this one the last one. I want uh, something something interesting. Okay, we'll do two more. This one's called Brock University St. Catharines Uses Flat Earth Image. Hi, Mark. I saw this article from the local university. I was intrigued by the photo they used. Thought I would share it with you. Cheers, Enrico. And you can go to, you just look up the article. It's called uh, Brock to Power Down for Earth Hour 2. Brock to Power Down for Earth Hour. Yeah, it's a great image. In fact, I'm going to use it for one of my thumbnails. So thank you, Enrico, for sending me that. It's a, it's a cool image. I don't know who made it, but they're using the Flat Earth map. That's why it's an interesting one to look at. So it's from, again, it's B-R-O-C-K, Brock to Power Down for Earth Hour 2. And we'll do one more. You know what? We'll end on the Kathy Dunson Challenge. Like how I do the Kathy Challenge. Okay, it's called Update on Flat Earth Challenge. Zen and Mark, I sent follow-up emails to people this morning to let them know we had not forgotten about them. Mark, just in case you would like to mention this again, this is my spreadsheet tally currently. It's okay. I've included the $10,000 challenge from Curtis that might need to be segregated because his challenge is unique. I've also included Alma. However, she stated this was a challenge to the family. I did write to both of them and possibly including or promoting with this challenge. And it's currently, the, it's, the, um, it's the Flat Earth Challenge to all Globe Earth Believers. So if you know someone currently, I think we're up to 21, 25,000, doesn't really matter, it's a lot of money. 
$1,000 challenge to anybody who's a globalist who can prove the globe. And if you want to get a hold of the person that give you all the details on the challenge, if you're a scientist who want to try to make a quick buck, by all means, I don't think it's going to happen to me. I couldn't even get somebody to challenge Jeffrey Grupp during the, and granted, we weren't offering money, which is why we're offering money now. It's like, look, put your money where your mouth is. And I agree. So I put in about like $1,000 of my own money. You can contact Kathy Dunson. And her email address is P-E-R-E-Landra77. So P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. Her name is Kathy Dunson. Otherwise, you could also go to Zen Garcia's page, which is on Truth Frequency Radio. And his show is called Secrets Revealed. We're poning up a whole bunch of money for any scientists that think they can knock the, the, the flat earth out of the park. It's been two years now. They're not doing it. They're not. They're not touching. It. Not even coming close. They. They won't, they won't even debate us. So, but but hey, you know maybe maybe the money will entice them. I know that usually it's about their reputation and not the money when it comes to scientists. But again, if you want to you want to be part of this, if you know a scientist, you say, look, there's 25 grand if you can prove it's a globe. It's probably going to be way more by then. Then send them Kathy Dunson's email address or email her and let her know you heard it from me. And with that, let's close this thing out. Yeah, it's about, about close. I try to keep it under under an hour when I'm doing these Q&A shows. And if you want to send me your email with any questions, comments, examples, links, pictures, whatever you want, send it to msargent23 at comcast.net. That is msargent23 at comcast.net. And because it's the only email I've used for 20 something years. And I will, I will do what I can. I will try to read it on Strange World, which is on Tuesday nights currently on True Frequency Radio. And if I can't get to that, can't get to it then because I get a lot of phone calls, I will try to do a separate email show and read it here. Anyway, thanks very much, guys, and keep it flat. <laughs>